she asked me to follow her out, so I did what she said. <laughs> it's on. It's on. It's on. Okay. Yeah. Well, Joe said that he wants to do a little bit of interview. So today is called "He Said and I Said." <laughs> oh yeah. What, what kind of interview are we going to be doing now? I don't know. Let me ask. <laughs> Go ahead. You start. <laughs> so it's wonderful to have this wonderful <laughs> series here, and it's um, I, there are so many wonderful pianists here. It almost feels like playing a little bit like a graduation <laughs> recital. <laughs> so, so now she thinks she's a Julie <laughs> or a studio concert. <laughs> well, I mean, whatever. I look at it like this: whatever makes you play well is fine with me. Right. And clearly, the, it was mission accomplished. Thank so you. I have a little story to tell you about first piece. Okay. So it was slightly over 30 years ago, <laughs> I was in Carnegie Hall, April 21st, 1993. I heard the legendary pianist Sher Cherkasky play this piece as part of uh, the second half of his Carnegie recital. Since then, I have been waiting to hear a performance that really reminds me of it, instead of hearing performances that make me think that they shouldn't play the piece. <laughs> this is actually the first time. I thought Aww. it was sensational, sensational what you did. In. Thank you. Not to mention everything else. The way that you said it, the story goes, <laughs> I wasn't sure what comes next. <laughs> okay. but you, you have specialized over the years in playing both Rachmaninoff and in doing a lot of Schubert list. Yeah, and last list. couple of years, yeah. 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 That's your thing. Uh, well, I mean, I recorded a list album. It's coming out next year. So this is just a part of um, the album. I mean, the five transcriptions. Right, the right. Album, yeah. um, I, I'm wondering, oh, by the way, going back to the Chopin, okay. you did cut out a lot of orchestral yes. interludes. <laughs> was yeah. that that was obviously intentional? Yes. And why? Well, because they're too repetitive. Because they keep repeating. It's, it's, well, I think it would be it would sound completely different if you actually have an orchestra or somebody else, like a string quartet, or, to play with you. And it, it is quite repetitive, especially you know that it's going to uh, repeat again. And I feel like some of the variations, actually, if it, you combine it, it's almost even more effective. Like one and two. Yeah. And three and four. <laughs> Can you imagine if you play this beautiful melody and then you should go on to ba 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 and then again you do da 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 No, da, I, I, da. I th I've never heard anybody do it, but it's actually an effective idea. Oh, great. I mean, I don't <laughs> think I would... I'm glad you like that. I don't think I would like that w in the version with the orchestra. Right, right, of but, course, yeah. But yeah. This, this version actually makes it flow better. I'm kind of a little bit more compact, in, in my uh, opinion. Yeah, just a little bit more compact, yeah. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about your programming of the Schubert List. Okay. Uh, because after playing those five amazing songs, and mm -hmm. those were among the five best right. of the 64 amazing. songs that Liszt transcribed yeah. of Schubert, what made you end the group with Widmung, which isn't by Schubert, by the way? Yeah, well, actually, there, um, there is one more leader that should go between the serenade and the Bacaro, the hard part of a lot. The other serenade. Yeah, yeah, the other serenade. But it makes the program a little bit too long, so I, I took it out. I feel like the way that the pieces go together not just with sing, uh, key signature and harmony, but also with characters, especially if you go from Ave Maria going <laughs> into El Koenig, it's almost like, you know. <laughs> so um, a prayer, and then you have El Koenig. And I do want to end the first half with lots of love and, you know, something very, you know, especially in today's world, we need lots of and beautiful love and this song was written for Clara and I just feel like it's a much better way to end the first half. Yeah. I Rather than Al Kunik. But, it, but, is, it, but it's, you, you know, know. It's, it's always a matter of pianistic taste right, but right. I actually yeah. like the idea of not ending with a bangy piece. 
But of course, it depends how you program it together. Right, but that right, was course, very yeah. effective. Yeah, I, I particularly love how you know. Of course, after Okunik, you are, <laughs> you are, you know, you are trying to catch your breath a right. bit. But you don't want to leave the child dead, <laughs> so you want to go into something, yeah, of love. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, it's it's funny when you think about Ave Maria and what it represents, as right, you say, right. a prayer, a prayer. Yeah. and a very elevated piece, yeah. and then this horrifyingly. Yeah. Uh, tense piece about mm -hmm. this man trying to save his child yeah. unsuccessfully. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it just shows the breadth of Schubert yeah. that he could do that much and, yeah. and kudos to Liss yeah. for doing a great job of transcribing those pieces. <laughs> sure, you, you can. Liss will be very happy if you applaud him. All right, so about Rachmaninoff, you played so much Rachmaninoff. You played the Etudes Tableau, you played the mm -hmm. second sonata, yeah, um, more these pieces. pieces yeah. This was a good blend, because I, I like the collection of the transcriptions mm -hmm. that you put together, and, and are ending with the polka, which some, yeah. people, some people don't know that that tune was written by his father, yeah, which, yeah, is why, right, yeah. which is why it's called polka they W R V R depending on what country you're in. Yeah, right. I mean, it's actually his father. I believe his name was Vasily. Mm. So in Russia, it's it V R. Yeah. But I don't know how it became W R in other places. Vasily. Vasily, I suppose. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why uh, this particular program went this way. There's actually a story behind it. So last year, I was working with um, programming with a, a for my China tour. And they wanted me to play something for Rahman 150th anniversary. And originally, I, want, I, I gave them something much, much heavier. I wanted to include the sonata number two and the opus 39. But I knew, for me, it's very interesting. But for the audience, it's, a, it's like it's too much. It really is, mm. is too heavy, it's too strong. So I remember I did several versions of the programming, uh, including the one that um, I included in the second half today. And I worked on it until like 3 a.m., which is 3 p.m. in China time. <laughs> and right. we were just like back and forth talking about the program. And I ended up with this because the first half in, in for my China tour was Opus 39. So after Opus 39, you want something of sort of like desserts. <laughs> mm. You know, light and uh, lots of colors and descriptions, preludes. And, but I didn't want to just do short pieces. I wanted to, I wanted to sound like it has a story, it has a connection of the entire half. You could just sit there, you don't even have to applaud, which actually works even better if you don't apply in between. Right. So it, it just, it, it flows one into another. Would and you put that in the program, please yeah. don't applaud between yeah. selections? Well, <laughs> sometimes even- It doesn't you, work, but Sometimes <laughs> even if you do, they applaud anyway, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I particularly like the second half, yeah. Very much. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I want to bring up one thing. There is one piece on the second half that actually is not a transcription of Rachmaninoff. It's his original song, The Vocalese. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's right. Yeah. Um, how many piano transcriptions have you found of that piece? Because there are so There's many. There's so many. Mm, I saw a couple of them, but I chose and learned the um, Zoltan Gochit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, th you know, the especially flows so beautifully from the prelude. <laughs> you know, the same chord just right goes in, into the vocalis. Yeah, and I like particularly the ending with all the trickling, like fast notes. Yeah, so I like this version uh, very much. Yeah. By the way, if any of you don't know the name Zoltan Kocsis, he was a Hungarian pianist. He was born the same year as Andras Schiff, 1953. Unfortunately, he passed away, I believe, in 2017. Phenomenal pianist and did some great transcriptions. In addition to this one, the Magic Fire Music, the Wagner of Magic Fire Music, is a fantastic transcription. He was a wonderful pianist. Worth checking out if you go on YouTube and find his recordings. Anyway, I'm so delighted. This was such a great recital. Thank you. And Thank you very do we, much. Do we everybody. agree, folks? Yeah. 
Thank you again. I want to thank you all for coming. If anybody feels like donating to the series, there, is, there are instructions for donating over there someplace. And just to no, uh, let you know, next week a pianist, Ali Mamadoff, playing a very phenomenal program, including one of the truly great transcriptions ever written by anybody. It's a, he's playing the Sansons Liszt Horowitz Dance Macabre, which if you don't know that piece, that you should go on YouTube and listen to. Fantastic transcription. Actually, it's become strangely popular the last few years. Thank you again. Thank you, Thank you for coming. Have a good night. <laughs>